Hello to everybody again. It's great to be with you on this Saturday morning. I have been preaching the Novena of Grace in honour of St. Francis Xavier for the last few days in St. Agnes's Church in Crumlin. The Novena of Grace is in honour of St. Francis Xavier, the Jesuit missionary. Traditionally, uh, a Jesuit was cured uh, through the intercession of St. Francis Xavier. And so began the Novena of Grace um, it was first brought to Ireland and to Dublin in the year 1712 uh, in this very parish in St. Mary's parish as it was or Halston Street today uh, and 1712 of course was way back before uh, Catholic emancipation. Now it's a wonderful Dublin tradition that has been uh, more or less happening in many Dublin churches and it's not exclusive to Dublin but Dubliners are particularly fond of it. Um, it's more or less been happening all the years since then uh, and people gather from the 4th to the 12th of March to pray through the intercession of St. Francis Xavier and to ask for his uh, prayers and his support for all sorts of reasons. It's also nicely in tandem with the season of Lent um, so in a way people can feel very uh, spiritually consoled during the Novena of Grace um, in the season of Lent, it's quite powerful, spiritually powerful, uh, for for you know for intercession, for um, you know answering prayers for ourselves and for all who are dear to us. What have I been doing during the Novena of Grace? It's usually built around the Mass, uh, Mass and a homily, with the prayer of Saint Francis Xavier, and then of course the blessing with the relic of Saint Francis Xavier. Here in Halston Street, actually, it's um, unique in the sense that uh, traditionally the missionary cross of St. Francis Saviour, which was presented to the parish many, many years ago, which is in the uh, keeping of the sisters in uh, George's Hill right next door, is brought out at the end of the Novena of Grace uh, for people to venerate and uh, for a blessing. If you want to see that missionary cross, tune in on the last day of the Novena of Grace, um, the 12th of March, where uh, Brother Richard, the parish priest, will be blessing people with it. Um, and you can do that on the parish webcam, Halston Street. Just Google Halston Street, H-A-L-S-T-O-N-S-T-R-E-E-T. -E -E and, you know, the wonders of the web will get you straight tr through to the, to the, uh, to the church. Um, I was talking uh, during the week about Our Blessed Lady and the fact that she always points away from herself to her son Jesus. Mary is very quiet in the scriptures, says very little, um, affirms that she will cooperate and collaborate with the Lord's message in the Gospel of St. Luke, and then rushes to uh, her cousin Elizabeth uh, after she hears the great news about Elizabeth's uh, pregnancy and the uh, arrival uh, of John the Baptist. And she proclaims that wonderful Magnificat. Again, always praising God, always uh, giving honour and glory to God. Then, uh, you know, she says very little in terms of the uh, um, early years of Jesus' life. She treasures everything and ponders them in her heart, even when the messages are hard to understand or even foreboding. And a sword, Simeon said at the uh, presentation, will pierce your own soul too. She treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then um, we know that Mary speaks when she expresses her, her worry and her surprise at Jesus disappearing in the temple when he's 12 years of age. Do you not know that your father and I would be worried about you? And of course Jesus said, um, I had to be about my father's business all very cryptic in ways, all very hard to understand, but Mary kept the faith, pointing all the way, all the time away from her son, away from herself to her son, away from herself to Jesus, her son. 
Then in the wedding at Cana in Galilee, Mary uh, again points to her son by going to him and asking him to quite frankly solve the problem. They've no more wine. And she tells the servants at the wedding feast, do whatever he tells you. The next day we spoke about Joseph. And Joseph says even less in a sense. Joseph is so quiet. And it's like, as Pope Francis has said in that lovely devotion, Sleeping St. Joseph, it's like, you know, Joseph is sleeping on the job. Now, I'm going to just move this for a moment to my little altar here. And there is Joseph sleeping. And I put the prayers of all the people, our Padre Pio friends and uh, our uh, Padre Pio spiritual children. I put the prayers and all people who have asked my prayers under Joseph because he sleeps on it. And uh, he takes care of our prayers even when he is asleep. And that's what Pope Francis loves about sleeping St. Joseph. This idea that, you know, even when he's asleep, he takes care. Because in the, again, the Gospels, we are reminded that Joseph, in a dream, is told, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because she has conceived what is in her by the power of the Holy Spirit. And then in the other dream, you know, take Mary and the child and go to Egypt, because Herod has a plan to do away with you. So these, again are you know wonderful illustrations of the prayers of uh saint joseph even while he's sleeping so you know in a way like our, our our heavenly friends the saints for example the angels they don't sleep on the job of course um in the eternal now in the kingdom there's always someone on duty you know they are the emergency service they're always available to us they're always uh standing to attention in a sense ever ready to uh, hear our prayers and bring them to the feet of our Saviour. We also covered the themes of healing and the themes of reconciliation. We had a powerful uh, service of the Sacrament of Penance on Thursday uh, where people came to confession and people uh, you know, were um, confidently able to approach the Lord in the Sacrament of Reconciliation. And that was wonderful to see as well. Again, that idea was, you know, to give everybody a chance in Lent to come before the Lord and to have their sins forgiven in confession. And then last night we were looking at the whole theme of healing and the Blessed Sacrament was exposed. But we brought the good Lord Jesus around the church, uh, you know, to the people. Um, and people were able to adore the Lord in his most blessed sacrament, uh, you know, where they were, where they were in the church, uh, like, like a, a, a kind of a procession of the monstrance. It's a bit like in, during the pandemic in May of 2020, I was able to bring the blessed sacrament around uh, to the roads of the parish in Priorswood, um, to each road, just to pray and bless the people. I got the idea from our Holy Father, Pope Francis, who brought the monstrance out into St. Peter's uh, Square, and many bishops and priests brought the monstrance out onto the streets of the towns during the pandemic. So that's what we're doing. We are trying to, uh, you know, bring Jesus close to the people because the Lord Jesus is close to the people. So we continue the last couple of days of the Novena of Grace. We'll tell you next week how we got on. Don't forget to watch out. This Sunday is the Gospel of the Woman at the Well in Samaria and how powerfully Jesus, you know, invites her to faith in him and invites her to share her faith in him with the others of the town. Until next time, God bless.